Hey, what's up, you guys? Jeff Cohn here with another episode of the Team Building Podcast, where we interview top team leaders, broker owners, and thought leaders from across the country. Today, we have an awesome guest in Mr. Ford Duncan. Ford is one of our active elite real estate systems clients, and today is unique because I actually have Ford here in my studio with me today on the heels of our team building workshop, where we do a whole day on team building, as well as a second day on investing, and a lot of fun in between. Ford, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Today's an awesome topic. Uh, I know next month in the month of October, we're going to be talking about agent retention and different strategies surrounding how to best retain our agents. I know a lot of brokerages focus on getting agents, but what do they do to keep them and how do they create the most value for them? So we're going to be talking about that a little bit today. And the reason we chose Ford for coming on uh, on this particular topic is because his team does an amazing job at agent retention. And he's a current active elite real estate systems client. So it's great to have you on the show today and great to have you here in Omaha. Yeah, it's been uh, been fun. I definitely recommend people come check out the workshops y'all put on. It's been great. Cool. And I know you guys actually participated in the Team Building Summit a few months back. Mm -hmm. So we are hosting that again in 2022. So if you're trying to plan your summer, check out um, the, the teambuildingsummit.com. Or you can go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com and just click on events to buy your ticket for the Team Building Summit. And then we usually host two or three um, on-site team building workshops in Omaha in our 10,000 square foot hybrid tech powered office of the future. Today, um, Ford is participating in the last one of the year, and it is in September right now. Um, when this airs, we'll probably be into October. But we also will have another virtual event coming up. So to find out more information, again, on all upcoming events, both virtual and in person, go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Just click on events at the top. So talk a little bit about the event just for fun for those yeah. listening. Because a lot of people hear me talk about it. That's one of the things I invite people to come to Omaha and hang out. And I know Omaha is probably not the sexiest destination. I think if you look up top places to visit, we're probably number three on the list. So <laughs> people don't always get super excited about it. But I think they are always pleasantly surprised when they come here. So what has your experience been two days in? Yeah, so I'll start with a little bit about Omaha. It's so unassuming. Like you hear Nebraska and you're like, it's just a bunch of cornfields, which is accurate. When you're flying in, you see yep. nothing but a bunch of cornfields. Yep. But Omaha's really cool. Um, and uh, your office is amazing. If you're a coaching client, obviously you have access to the drive and um, there's pictures there. But once you're actually here in the building and really see it in person, you see that uh, it's an awesome place and you guys put a lot of thought into it. So Appreciate we've really, that. really enjoyed the office. Uh, the workshop is super helpful. It's packed with a ton of information. So come uh, ready to get that information, be ready to digest a lot of it. Um, you're going to get your fill. Um, but uh, I definitely think that we're going to have a lot of takeaways and action items from this particular workshop that we're going to be able to go back and implement um, almost immediately. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. For anyone that wants to check out an, the office, we actually have a link we send people to. Uh, it's part of our ClickFunnels landing page to help attract agents to our world and or non-licensed agents. Uh, it's essentially our recruiting landing page. And there's a video of our office there. So go out to career.kwelite.com and you can see a quick video of the office. Uh, we put a lot of time and money into the build out and the space to make it a technology company that's in the business of real estate, as well as all of the other businesses that support the transaction like mortgage, title, and insurance. All right, Ford, well, let's d jump into the topic. Um, share with our audience members a little bit about your team, where you were last year, kind of where you're at this year as far as agent count and production. Cool. Well, uh, we started with just my mom and me. Um, my mom was a single agent. I joined her in 2016. And uh, at the time, that was really as big as we had imagined getting um, family business, per se. Um, very quickly, as I got into real estate myself, I realized that the income potential was exponential. But I also realized that um, real estate is a lot of work, a lot of work that I did not want to have my hand in completely by myself. So uh, building a team uh, was, was important to me very quickly. And so we added a couple of agents um, and an admin staff. Um, we had a, a part-time admin and I think at, at one time four agents. But uh, one big thing that we learned quickly, um, and it relates to retention, is uh, the best way to retain agents is to hire the right ones in the, in the get-go. You know, um, we, we made some hires that probably weren't the best fit for us, um, and we lost those agents um, 
pretty quickly. We started our own brokerage. We brought most of those agents with us. But in that move, um, they did not truly fit the values that we had. Um, and they did not have um, what they needed to fit in our world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so very quickly, we lost those agents. What year was that? That was in late 2019. Okay. And then how did you hear about Elite Real Estate Systems? So podcast, that, that was actually where I first heard it, um, was the podcast. I've listened to that since probably 2018. Okay. Um, and so we came to the summit, I believe it was in 2019. So right, right before we started our brokerage, I think it was either late May or early June, we went to the summit and then we opened our brokerage in September of 2019. Okay. So flash forward to today, how many agents do you guys have as of this recording? Uh, we have 10 agents. Um, plus, um, we have a couple of admin staff, um, and then obviously our, our leadership leadership team consists of myself and my mother. Um, so we're, we've grown significantly since late 2019 when we opened our brokerage. And how many homes do you think you guys will end up closing this year? Uh, 150 plus. Okay. We're, we're on track to, to get a little over 150. Where does that end up putting you volume wise? Uh, 35 million. Okay. And gross commission income? Little, little below a million. Yeah, that's um, what I'm about. really, in my head, I, I'm I'm pushing for that million mark. Yep, yep. It would be pretty awesome to get there. So, if you look at most teams, the average team in America, I would guess, has about two agents. You know, people start yeah. thinking, "Oh, I want to have a team." They have an admin, maybe one buyer's agent, maybe one listing agent, but they don't really seek out to go have ten agents or fifty right. agents. People think of real estate teams, and I think they always naturally think of the largest teams in their market. But the truth is, the average team in America only has two or three agents max. Mm-hmm. So you guys are up to 10. You're 3x the normal team. Um, that's a lot. Anyone that hits that 10 mark or more starts to see the importance of everything from culture, leads, accountability systems, and strategies, which are topics that we're pretty fond on speaking to. But very rarely does does agent retention get talked about. And it's important to have the conversation because it's not just a matter of adding agents, but like you pointed out, the right agents. And then once you have added the right agents, it's about giving them the right stuff to keep them in your world. So let's spend the next five or 10 minutes, the rest of the podcast, Mm -hmm. talking about what that right stuff looks like. And I can kind of share some of our experiences back when we ran Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group and now running the KW Elite Brokerage, some of the things that we do to help with agent retention. Um, And I'll kick that off with working with each agent to define their why and really digging into the purpose behind why the agent and or staff comes to work every day. And we do that by creating an actual physical um, vision board and I know we talked about this a little bit today at the workshop. So each person gets to define the life that they want to live and lead by creating images that represent that life with quantifiable data that can allow them to know if they're achieving what their goal is. If it's losing weight, that's an easy one to track. If it's planning a trip to Hawaii, it's easy to figure out how much money would I need to save to be able to go on the trip to Hawaii. So part of our agent retention plan is assisting people in not only identifying what kind of life they want to live and creating the vision board to go along with it, but then holding them accountable to those items that are on the board so that they can ultimately remove those things and replace them with even bigger and better uh, dreams for their future. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, at least for us, we don't have any agent um, on our team that has been selling real estate for over a year. So we've got a really interesting dynamic there where, um, obviously, our goal is to be where you guys are and um, trips to Hawaii and buying the, the latest and greatest car are definitely goals that some of our agents will be putting on their vision board. But to start with the agents that we have now, really, the goals were so small but we we encourage them to somewhat keep those goals small because they were new to the business. They didn't know anything about it, and they were probably, most of them, le- leaving full-time employment somewhere else to take a chance on real estate because they wanted the freedom. So we try to start by helping these agents understand what the real estate business is about, that it's not like what you see on TV. It's not um, Ryan Serhant, you know, selling the four million dollar, uh, twenty million dollar penthouse. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's just not the norm. Um, so that was the first step, in my opinion. The first step to retaining agents is in really in the onboarding process. Um, when you are setting realistic expectations for them of what they can expect in their first twelve months as an agent. And, and letting them know that, that most likely that's going to be pretty low. I love it. 
I think that's great. Don't set an unrealistic expectation and then have the agent be disappointed that they didn't make a hundred thousand their first year right. or sell 30 houses. And, you know, for us in Omaha, um, our market, our average sales price now is almost two fifty. But when I got into it, it was like one seventy three, and I needed to sell 50 houses to hit my income goal my first year. And what I found on average is most agents in their first 12 months, if they've never sold, will sell around 10 to 12 units. And so people need to be prepared financially for that. Right. If you go from a corporate job making 50 grand a year with benefits to selling real estate your first 12 months only doing 10 deals, you're probably not going to be able to make ends meet if you quit your full-time job. Right. So a lot of times we'll suggest to people to work part-time at their full-time job, downgrade right. to part-time while selling real estate until they feel comfortable, confident, have enough pendings in the pipeline to be able to quit altogether. But I love you sharing that strategy of setting realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. I share the same thing with agents when we train on how to do a listing pres or a buyer pres. Um, people will say, well, something went wrong and the seller's mad at me. And I'll say, well, why did you create the expectation that that wasn't going to go wrong? I tell yeah. every client, everything that can go wrong will go wrong, Murphy's mm -hmm. Law, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be the person here to put out the fires, and yeah. I'll actually take care of every single issue that comes up. I tell every seller that. So when someone says, oh, the lockbox didn't go on on time, or the sign blew over, or we got the address wrong, or this detail, it's like, of course we did. That's going to happen, but I'm mm -hmm. going to make it right. I'm going to make it right. right. You're hiring me to fix issues, not guarantee that no issues are going to take place. Right, right. That's a good one. One, one thing I definitely want to kind of – throw out there i know the listeners right now probably uh, it's circling around in their head did he just say that none of our agents have been selling real estate for longer than a year but he's talking about retention Re i want to remind everybody that new agents typically don't last much longer than six months so that that's really where we're focusing on is if we can retain agents new agents who can survive the first six months, who can hit that 12 months. We're on our way to, to 18 months. You take those baby steps with these agents, they're going to last. And not only are they going to last, but they are going to realize that they're looking around at all these other people that, that got into real estate around the same time as them, and they're not in the business anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're going to ask themselves, how come I'm in the business and they're not? And the wheels start turning. Oh, their broker, their team leader, their success manager, either they didn't have one or they didn't actually sit down with them on a weekly, bi weekly basis to go over their goals, to go over um, accountability with them, working their leads. Um, we've got some agents that, that don't work leads. We've got a couple that don't work leads. Um, they're local, they have a great sphere. And so, you know, we're teaching them those other things, but still holding them accountable to the goals they set. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of um, retention is that accountability. And it's not just lead accountability. Um, don't pigeonhole your agents into you've got to work online leads. If they have, like we've got one, she's a retired teacher and she, she knows everybody in the community. I am not going to pigeonhole her and her time to work cold internet leads when her best use of sure. her time is going to go to cultivating that that sphere. Sure, hundred percent. I like what you said about um, agents in and out of the business. I know Nars stat well ten years ago was that nineteen out of twenty agents are out of the business within their first twenty four months. But I think you're more accurate in to say six months. They might still have their license active. Yeah, because you can leave it active for twelve months. I think they recognize it's a fail, but they keep the license going because they worked so hard to get it. Right. And then the two-year mark is the official 24-month mm -hmm. mark. And I think you're 100% right, and it is based on um, setting unrealistic expectations, and then no one was there to hold them accountable. So people yeah. set these goals, but it's a double-edged sword in, in the real estate business because the agents have the freedom to do whatever they want with their time. And mm -hmm. a lot of the traditional brokers say, I can't make my agent go to a training or go to a meeting. The nice thing is that if you do create internet leads and or you offer a team with training, and accountability, you can have certain requirements for them to be mm -hmm. able to receive those services from the team leader and or from the brokerage. So I love what you said about the leads. Yeah. Um, we agree that agents should work the leads that give them the most amount of money in the least amount of time with the least amount of energy. And as a leader, it's our job to work with each agent and treat them as an individual and find where their strengths are yeah. and where their weaknesses are. And that's part of another agent retention strategy that we've implemented since the beginning of Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group, which was success managers. Yeah. So a great book that speaks to that is The Dream Manager. It talks about how you know, people aren't always working to realize their dreams. They're just in a stepping stone position. Yeah. And I'd say a full-time buyer's agent, that's not someone's dream for most people to go show houses and no. sell houses. It's a stepping stone position. So we, and this is advice I'd give to you as you hire new agents and you know get them to their 18-month mark, 
our world as a leader has to be so big that as people start to see that vertical growth or that hockey stick growth, they can continue to stay inside of our world and still have opportunities for additional growth right. in our world and they don't grow beyond our capabilities. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is continuing to attend workshops like this and to be able to go to the um, to Team Building Summit and you go to other events and you listen to podcasts and you read books and you continue to better, better yourself as a leader and you'll attract better talent the stronger you get. Yes. I, I would definitely say that's probably – um, the culmination of everything as a leader, if you want to retain your agents, don't get stuck on your own hamster wheel. Um, if you're so busy working in your business that you don't have time to work on your business, you're going to fall behind your agents. If you don't grow at least as fast, if not faster than your agents are, they're going to leave you. If you can't get your world big enough to where you have an agent, uh, and I, I think of one of mine. I, she's from, from upstate South Carolina, and she's got a lot of family there. And I've already told her, I said, if you decide that you want to move and you're going to stay in real estate, let me know. I'll, I will open a virtual branch up in your area um, because I want the good people that we have to feel like no matter where they go in the world, I'll figure out some way that you can stay within Duncan Group Properties. Sure. I, I want you to be able to feel like you can grow within us without having to leave us. Mm -hmm. I love that mentality, and I've shared a lot, the three different types of agents. You have a dependent agent, and then your brokerage or team needs to offer a dependent agent model. I'd say a majority of teams offer the dependent agent model, but don't have a solution for the interdependent and the independent. Mm -hmm. And so what you're referring to is this agent leaves, right? They're right. an hour or two or 10 or across the entire country, and they are no longer dependent. They're more interdependent and or independent and can operate without all of your support, but they still choose to stay in your world for other reasons other than the handhold. Right. Agents typically want the handhold on their first 10 to 20 transactions, and then after that they go interdependent. The traditional brokerage model does not serve the dependent agent or the independent agent. It serves the interdependent agent. Right. And the big pain point I see is when new agents get into the business, there's not a dependent model, so most brokers push people over to teams and says, right. go join the team. Well, then they create a dysfunction that they allow those agents, once they become strong enough to be their own team, to leave those teams and be a competing team in, in inside and under the same umbrella which creates a dysfunction. And then they also don't have a solution to allow those team leaders to leave to go start branch offices or right. other franchises. When the agent wants to go independent, there's not a solution. And then they have to leave and go to EXP or Keller or yeah. somewhere that has an independent solution. It's always either uh, money or values. Those are the two things that, that any agent is going to weigh when they're deciding whether they're going to stay with you or they're going to leave you. you. You can go almost anywhere and find more money. There's always more money somewhere out there. Um, where agents end up deciding to stay and they almost stop looking is when they align with your values. So, you know, that that's another uh, point that kind of goes along with that is um, be able to provide them the money that they're looking for. But at the root of it, if your company values are strong enough and align with the talent that you have, even if they could go get more money somewhere else, if they had to compromise the values, they're not going to do it. Um, so create uh, values within your company that your talent can align with uh, and create opportunity where they make the money that they're happy with. Because most agents, they we talked about it with, with vision boards, they don't need more money. You know, they know what they need and they you give them the opportunity to make that where they are mm -hmm. and you just provide the values, um, both, you know, actual internal values, um, but also value adds mm -hmm. um, where you're providing them with what they need to be happy. I love it. Yeah, Gary Keller says it best, top right corner of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. It's not about the money. It's about being the best that you can be. And I change being to becoming. It's an action word, and we can control what we become by the way we choose to spend our time and the way we choose to think. Ford Duncan, you are awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. For those uh, listening, please don't hesitate to go out to iTunes and give us a five-star review. Give a shout-out to Ford and thank him for the time he spent with us today. We also are going to take um, – anytime anyone has any topics – 
that they would like us to speak on or questions that they would like us to ask our guests, we'd be more than happy to take your recommendations. Um, you can just send us a message on our Instagram page if you'd like. We'll work on getting you a cell phone number. I know Catherine was going to get us one day, and I don't know if it's in here right now, but we'll get you a cell phone number. You can text as well on one of our next episodes. But please go out there and give us a five-star review. Also, for more information about the team building product where we help team leaders in a group coaching call every Thursday at 1115 Central, you can go to ersdemocall.com or just go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com and learn more. We have a fun little cartoon that explains all of our product offerings and everything else that we're doing here at Elite Real Estate Systems. Ford, if someone has a referral for you, say again the market that you're in and then how. what's the best way that somebody could get in contact with you? Yeah, we're in the Myrtle Beach, um, Conway, South Carolina market, um, expanding even to Florence, South Carolina. So anything in northeastern South Carolina, um, give me a shout. You can find all my contact information on our website, www.duncangroupproperties.com. That's D-U-N-C-A-N, not like the donut. <laughs> <laughs> I will say um, just one unsolicited plug for uh, ERS. Um, I'm here at the summit. That's been that's been great, or the workshop rather. Um, but we have been subscribing to the coaching for a while now. Um, our agents love it. If I'm going to say anything, you know, outside of the the team leader training, the agents love the agent training. So uh, that's almost, in my opinion, like a freebie. The team leader training, the investor training, is worth what we pay. Um, for um, the the whole membership, mm -hmm. and then the Wednesday dialogue and the Monday topical training, it's just almost like an added bonus that our agents just love. We appreciate that. Thank you for for sharing that forward. And yeah, there's a lot of value there. I think I added it up today. It's like 16 hours of content. If you want to consume all of that content every month, and your first six months, we can get you 50% off. So again, you can get a call set up with our CEO Kevin McGowan at ersdemocall.com if you want to know more about it. Uh, but as Ford is pointing out, every Monday, Wednesday's agent content, every Tuesday's investor content, and every Thursday's team leader content. And as a team leader and or investor, you get all of the agent um, sessions for free. It's unlimited. You can put as many agents on that as you want. So you could have a team of 20 people for $500 a month and everyone can consume what is pertinent to them and everything's streamed live where your agents can interact with us. And there's also recordings that are indexed so people can search any topic they want and it'll populate those specific trainings. Everything always gets recorded. Um, so agents, instead of having to come to you and bother the team lead to answer every little question, a lot of those questions are answered inside of our indexed library of topics pertaining to investing, team building, and individual agent topics who are still selling real estate. For Duncan, not like the Duncan Donut. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You were awesome. Thanks for having me. All right, have a good one. You too.